as we observed in one of the other uh, tutorials that a temperature time diagram of water is uh, useful in gaining an understanding of how water converts into ice but it is of uh, limited value for foods that are complex mixtures uh, of water and a variety of uh, soluble and insoluble constituents now a diagram for a food which is a highly complex system also does not provide an easy explanation however it is useful uh, to illustrate how a simple binary mixture of water and a solute will behave during freezing so in this module we will look at a phase diagram of a binary mixture mixture of water and sucrose now assume that this system is at normal atmospheric pressure so we're going to draw a, um, a diagram so we will first have our y-axis uh, y-axis will be temperature and uh, we will uh, list uh, from minus 20 minus 10 0 to 20 degrees C on x-axis we have uh, percent sucrose by weight uh, 0 20 40 uh, 60 and 80. Now next we will draw a uh, curve uh, that will originate from 0 uh, going down to about minus 10 uh, as shown here and this will become clear in a minute uh, and we will extend this curve below this line and we will draw an incline line as shown here in orange we will label this curve as A and B now this region in the above is for the solution remember our solution is water and sucrose under this curve is the mixture of solution and the solid phase of the component that is present in excess in the solution now the solution is water and sucrose so the excess phase is water solid phase of water is ice so we have solution plus ice the curve AB is called the freezing point curve this uh, curve separates the solution from the mixture of solution plus ice now at any point on this curve the solution is at its freezing point note that A is for 0% sucrose by weight so A represents concentration of 0% sucrose in other words it's all water and the freezing point is 0 as we see in this diagram this curve slopes downward and to the right this indicates that the freezing point decreases with increasing sucrose concentration in the solution now line BC is called the solubility curve this curve shows the equilibrium conditions between the solution and the solid hydrate form of the solute in this case our solute is sucrose so it is sucrose hydrate so the region CBE represents sucrose hydrate plus solution now the positive slope of the soluble curve towards the right indicates that as we increase the temperature as we go up we are increasing the temperature more sucrose will become soluble at any point along BC the solution is saturated now below this line that we had drawn before this whole region represents sucrose hydrate plus ice these are the two solid phases of the solute which is sucrose hydrate and ice the solid phase of water at point B the freezing point curve and the solubility curve intersect this point represents the conditions under which ice and sucrose hydrate crystallize simultaneously not as a compound but as an intermingled mixture at this point the solution can exist in a stable equilibrium 
with the solid forms of the solvent. So the solid form of solvent is ice and the solute which is in our case sucrose. This point is called the eutectic point or cryohydric point. The eutectic temperature of a solute is the temperature at its eutectic point B. In the case of sucrose, it is minus 9.5 degrees C. This temperature also may be viewed as the highest temperature at which maximum solidification can be attained. At point B, if we raise the temperature, moving upward in the vertical direction, both solid forms of solvent and solute will disappear. As you notice that we will move into the region of the solution. If we move downward in the vertical direction, there is a complete change of fluid to solid. Note that the region below is for sucrose hydrate plus ice. So that's the solid phase for both the uh, solute as well as the solvent. Moving towards the right causes crystallization of sugar and moving towards the left results in crystallization of water into ice. Now this uh, table shows the eutectic temperature of some of the solutes both inorganic and organic. Note that calcium chloride has a very low eutectic temperature of minus 55 degrees Celsius whereas salt sodium chloride is about minus 21 degrees Celsius. Note sucrose is minus 9.5 and so on. Since most foods have high water content we will examine a process that occurs in the left hand portion of this figure. So we are going to draw a uh, vertical line and we will label this line as J, K, L, M and N. This process represents a constant sucrose concentration for the system at 15 percent as we can see uh, on the x-axis. Although we can describe the various components of the line JKLMN uh, from this figure, uh, we are going to use a corresponding temperature time plot and uh, we will see it on the next screen that will make it easier to understand this process. We have drawn an arbitrary line XY uh, and uh, we are going to use that example where the concentration for Y is 41 percent. Also note that B which was the eutectic point has a percent sucrose concentration of 56.2. So we draw another y-axis of course for temperature and an x-axis of time and we label the temperature values again as minus 20, minus 10, 0, 10, 20. Note that we begin this process from the location J so the temperature for J we represent here TJ and draw a line and then a small kink to express supercooling then again an incline line again a small kink and then a horizontal segment and then a drop again an incline line and we label this curve as TJ the little kink here the lower part is TS which represents the supercooling then TK and we have TL somewhere along this line and then the little kink here represents TSS which is for super saturation and then TM then TM the other temperature is also TM because this is horizontal line and then TN. Now we'll write down the concentrations to uh, correspond with the other figure. So TJ this was for 15 percent sucrose. TK is at 15 percent sucrose but TL represents 41 percent sucrose and TM represents 56.2 percent sucrose. So let's look at this process 
Starting from location J, the sensible heat is removed as the temperature decreases from Tj to Tk. Location S refers to supercooling. When temperature decreases to Ts, nucleation will occur and due to crystal growth, heat of crystallization is released, raising the temperature to Tk. The initial freezing point of the water-sucrose mix is therefore Tk. From K to M, water gradually converts to ice. The latent heat of fusion of water is removed. As water is converted into pure ice crystals, the remaining solution becomes more concentrated with sucrose. That's why the sucrose concentration keeps on increasing. Although the sucrose concentration of the total system remains constant at 15%, at any temperature between K and M, it is the concentration of remaining unfrozen solution that increases as ice crystals form. The increased solute concentration in the unfrozen water fraction then reduces the freezing point as seen by the sloping curve from K to M on the temperature time diagram. TSS denotes the temperature where there is supersaturation of sucrose. Now supersaturation occurs just prior to crystallization of the solute which in our case is of course sucrose. The heat of crystallization again raises the temperature to Tm, the eutectic point. When the system temperature reaches Tm, the solution now is at a stable equilibrium and the concentration of the fluid phase is determined by the eutectic value of 56.2% as shown by the point uh, in the phase diagram B that we saw before uh, for this binary mixture. Note that this value is read by following the horizontal line from M to point B on the phase diagram. Now as more heat is removed, the concentration remains at 56.2% sucrose and more ice crystals and sucrose hydrate are formed in constant proportion. The temperature Tm remains constant as ice and sucrose hydrates crystallize in equal proportion and the ensuing heat of crystallization is removed. Once the solution is completely solidified at temperature Tm, further cooling of the solid mixture to temperature Tn results in removal of sensible heat which is about 0.5 uh, calories per gram per degree C. Now the phase diagram is also useful for determining the amount of ice formed at any time during the freezing process. At any temperature between Tk and Tm, it is possible to calculate the ratio of pure ice to solution. So the procedure is as follows. Draw a horizontal line XLY as we had done shown in red in the uh, phase diagram the ratio of ice to solution is equal to Ly divided by XL in the phase diagram. You can see that the vertical line was for 15% sucrose. So the length XL is 15 and the segment Ly is 26 or the ice to solution ratio is equal to 26 over 15. This means that at location L there are 26 parts of ice and 15 parts of solution in a total mixture of 41 parts. This composition may be expressed as 26 over 41 or 63.4 percent ice and 15 over 41 or 36.6 percent solution. The sucrose content of the solution may be determined by just following the uh, sucrose content uh, at Y and that is 41 percent as we can see on the phase diagram. So this way we can determine uh, the amount of ice formed at any time during the freezing process. When the system reaches temperature Tm, the ratio of pure ice to solution may be calculated from Mb divided by Dm. The sucrose concentration of the solution is obtained by reading at point B as 